Well, thank you all for being here. And I think that uh, you can hear the frustrations in everybody's voices. And also, I think we've done an excellent job of framing the issue. Uh, and we don't have to do it too much because it gets framed to us uh, every weekend. I come from West Virginia. We drive everywhere. We drive to school. We drive to work. We drive to the grocery store. We drive to church. We drive to see our families. We drive to see our friends. I mean, we are rural America where cars are the only way to get to the places that you need to be. And so I think what, what people want to hear is, I get it, that you understand that gas has gone up uh, in West Virginia today. I think it was $4.34. Uh, it's now uh, nationally $4.56 up. Uh, they want to see somebody take responsibility, and the president is the one who said when he was first elected, I'll take responsibility instead of blaming others. And honestly, all he's done in this instance, something that hits everybody every day in their pocketbook, is blame everybody else. He blames Vladimir Putin. He blames COVID. He blames even American businesses. And uh, if you just even look and try to deflect his, his reasoning on who he blames, you can see that the prices were escalating well before Vladimir Putin ever invaded Ukraine. They've been escalating for a year before we even heard him talk about it with any kind of meaningful uh, discussion. So, you know, we have these high uh, gas prices we know that uh, the solutions are there, and we've heard uh, folks talk about it. I know Lisa on the on the Energy Committee has worked hard on unleashing uh, the American entrepreneurship and the American energy. Certainly, I come from an energy state as well that can be a contributor to help bring America back to that energy security and those um, and the and the security of uh, families knowing what their obligations are going to be when they fill up their car. So I was actually. Uh, in my driveway, and I was going to take a walk, and this uh, a guy in a truck is driving by, stops. This is a true story. His name's Craig, and he, uh, he tells me that he has to fill his truck up every day, and it costs him $140 to fill his truck up every single day. It's diesel. I said, well, what was it before? What was it before all these prices went up? $60. So it's basically almost two and a half times now for him to fill up. And it's gone up probably even more since we had the conversation over the last weekend. So it's time for the president to take responsibility that's actually going to result in pulling together and lowering these gas prices. So I would say we have heard from West Virginians. I know you all are hearing from people on, on your uh, websites. Uh, I'll, I just brought a few with me. I went past a gas station today in Huntington. Gas is now 425, so this is obviously a little probably dated to last week. A gallon food is going up. Utilities are going up. I'm a senior, and I'm barely making it. Senior citizen, Huntington, West Virginia. Quote, this is a father and a husband in Wellsburg, which is the very tippy top of our, our state. I fear before summer I will literally be choosing which to pay, fuel for my vehicle or food or food for the table for myself, my wife, and my two small children. And then lastly, a woman in Fayetteville, which is right near our new national park, I would encourage you to visit, uh, says with the increase in gas and diesel, everything else increases. It doesn't seem that anyone in Washington cares. So I would ask the president to take responsibility and, and make sure that our, our friend in Fayetteville, West Virginia, knows that we care and work on this very, very deep and um, uh, expensive uh, gas crisis that we're seeing in front of our American public. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Mm -hmm.